All right. This is going to be a quick press conference, guys. Remember, please keep your questions brief. One question per person. Don't give us one point A, point B, point C. Just jump straight to it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back to Wakanda. We're excited to have you guys. Let's jump in and holler at Ryan for a second here. Ryan, back to Wakanda to create more magic. Yeah, so, so um, it was a lot of pressure for sure. Uh, but it was a little different from the first time. The first time we were working and all of the pressure was uh, internal, I would say, because uh, people didn't really know what to expect. Um, and this time, we, we were navigating folks' expectations because they had seen the first film um, and, and were expecting maybe certain stories or, or, or uh, wishing for certain things. So what we had to do was really um, kind of close everything else out and focus on the work um, I have really incredible, incredible uh, talent up here in front of you all. And, and, and it was really just us putting our arms around each other, talking about the characters, talking about the story, talking about what we want to see out there and kind of trusting our instincts. And that was how we navigated it. And I, I'm, I'm really proud with uh, how it came out. We're there proud we of it too. Um, I think it was Winston who had said in an interview that there was on set, there was like an unspoken understanding. Uh, you know, as you guys were navigating, creating healing at the same time. Ryan, I'm going to stick with you. What was the entire experience on set now? Was there something specific that you had to do before you guys started shooting to ensure that the product is as pristine as the audience is expected to be? Yeah, we, um, it's a great question. Great question. We did a lot of um, community building exercises, I would say. Uh, and, and for me, it was important because I know how close we, we became over the course of that first film, and we were opening the film up to new talent, um, not just to Noach and uh, my Bella Cardena, Alex Livinali, who were playing Italo Canil in the film, but also um, you know, new, new talent uh, in Dominique Thorne and Michaela Cole. And I, and I wanted to make sure everybody felt you know, like a family. So we did quite a few things together, um, took some trips together, we did a, a screenplay read, made sure everybody was there in town, which is not easy to do. Um, and, and, and I think that the, the cast that was already a part of the film, they were, they were just great leaders in terms of bringing folks in, making sure that they felt like they were a part of the team, um, going to the stunt practices together. We would go to the water tank together. So it was a real family environment. Um, and, I'm, and I'm really happy that we were able to, to replicate that after we did the first one. The, the way we build this character is just a simple man. I mean, he has superpowers, of course, and, <laughs> and some wings in the angles, and it's, it's not normal, but, <laughs> but it's a simple man. You know, it's a guy who is trying to protect his family, to protect his kingdom, his uh, cultural heritage, you know, everything that is the most uh, important thing for him. And I, I, I think uh, everybody all around the world can share those uh, concerns. So that, that's why I think that people is getting this strong attach with him because they can feel identified with those uh, motifs. So yeah, I think it's, for me, is this guy who is just trying to, to protect everything, you know, in, in, in his life. And uh, he is around 500 years old. So he's taking a path, you know, he's taking some decisions and I hope everybody can take different decisions in their <laughs> lives, but at the end, it's just a way to save, uh, to, to, yeah, to, to, to protect everything. So the new members of the cast, we felt really welcome. These people were waiting for us with their open arms, and they protect us. And when you go to the set and find this bubble, you know, around you, uh, it's easier to, to, to play in the in the the all meanings of the word play that I love in English. So you can play as a child <laughs> and it's beautiful because you are protected, you feel confident and then you can go deep and you can uh, explore your character different ways, you know? So that that's fantastic. And then of course be part of Marvel Universe is it's great, but for me, the first and most important thing 
were the human, the human bridges, you know, the human contact, uh, the human empathize, empath empathize, yeah. So that, for me, was the, that part was the best part of all of all of this. Thank you. Um, we'd lost our brother and um, our king, our leader, and uh, that was. It, we just had a very different focus in mind. I remember when Ryan called and said, you know, we're, we're doing the second one. And I was like, oh, wow. And he was like, you know, he was very clear that this is what, you know, the legacy that would honor our brother. And that really, really made sense to me the minute he said it, um, knowing the sort of spirit that, that Chadwick had and how he would want this to continue. So the focus was really on that. And the purpose of why we were there was on that, which is it's just a whole other type of assignment. Um, and so th I don't know if I could hone it down to one word. Y'all be loving on this, like, give me, give me one word, give me three words thing. You know, I've been hearing that a lot over the last couple of weeks. But I mean, you know, I would say, you know, I could give a really elaborate answer to that. Because, you know, there's so much that this movie and this world, Wakanda, just sort of envelops and entails that it, it is hard. It's hard to, to bring it to one word. Uh, but I think this, this film has... Um, it has a very, very powerful journey in it with grief and loss, but also with healing and hope. And, and somehow, in the midst of all of that, I, I'm amazed to see how, you know, Ryan managed and, and you know, with us as his, you know, performers, there was, we, there was, a, there was a way that it, it still is very full and very, entertain, it's very entertaining. And it's, it's full of, it's like, it's like a full meal, you know? And I, I think that it's something that people also, <coughs> truly at the core of it they'll feel they'll feel feel our love and our honoring of our brother and for us that's at the very very core of what it needs to be locally and globally how what was the reverberation from the first black panther like for you um it was incredible i i was i was uh within the course of that year 2018 i was here i was in south africa i was in zimbabwe and um, it was really cool. I mean, I remember I was in the, um, the eastern region of this nation at, at, a, at a random hotel, and, uh, and um, a man, an Oga, you know, he was probably around <laughs> 70 or so, and I was just walking through, and I was with Lupita, and Lupita was like, cover your head. If people see your head, they're gonna know who you are. Like, just cover up your bald head. And I hadn't that day. And, um, and he just shouted out to me, General! <laughs> and it was kind of really cool. I was like, I don't know if this man has ever called a woman general in his life, you know? Never, probably. Um, so that was cool. You just felt right there like, wow, this is like, you're seeing how far that this, this movie has gone. It was like amongst so many different ages, so many different folks. Zimbabwe, of course, was very excited with it, loved it. Um, you know, South Africa was very, very excited by it. And we were at a school, I went to a school there and they really felt like an esteem boost, which I, I found really powerful because we are doing such amazing things on the continent all the time, but it doesn't get reflected. And what I love about Wakanda and I think what it did for, for us as a continent was it just, it just reflected us to the world in a way that it just doesn't, we just don't get to be seen on this type of a platform. People say, oh, Wakanda inspired Africa. It's like, no, Africa inspired Wakanda. That's it right there, yes. So, you know, that's something I, I see people experiencing and, re and, and receiving and, and knowing when I, when I went around the continent, and it was, it was very exciting. I saw at the Los Angeles premiere when Chadwick walked out of the car and his friend, who was a drummer in the movie, Jabari, uh, got out of the car ahead of him and started playing the drums and set the stage for him to walk the carpet. And then the Dora Milaje came around him and just walked with him. And I saw royalty, you know, majesty. And it wasn't, it was this beautiful marriage of performance and reality at the same time. And I said, that's not something that we get to see taken seriously. It's not a presence that we get to see and the reflection that we get to see taken seriously. It's, always been in some sort of, you know, just, just, you know, it's always a, a bit of a joke in some way. Um, and this was taken seriously and I said, wow, 
This is really, really big. Nothing else can be like this. So immediately, I started just divorcing myself from this idea that anything could be like Wakanda, like that, that anything could be like Black Panther really early. And I said, number two has to be its own thing. So even back then, I was saying, you guys really need to taper your, <laughs> your expectations for a, for a second movie because nothing could be like this. This is a first time. And nothing can be like a first time. Nothing can create a first impression ever again. So I walked into this being ready to have its own experience, ready to have a new experience. And unfortunately, reality had set that stage for us, that we couldn't even come close to having the same experience because we lost Chadwick. And we were all really hurt, and we still are um, very confused. I feel like the grief around losing people important to you is just, it's very confusing. Um, it's, like, it's confusing why it happens, what it means. And, you know, you, you're left with asking questions like, what's the point? And a lot of times, death especially doesn't feel like it has a point. Like, that doesn't feel like there's any point to death, but what there is a point to is life. And Chadwick showed us what his point was. Chadwick showed us what his life meant. You know, the meaning wasn't in the death. The meaning has always been in the life. And we discovered that as we went along. And we're, we're doing the same thing here. It's, 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 it's we're, we're showing what this means, and that's Wakanda forever. And, and we went in and discovered that. that. That was the major departure from number one, was just discovering that every single moment that we have that we're in front of you all is, is the meaning that we're giving you for what our life means, what the life of our friend that we lost meant, um, and so on. So Ryan creates a very, very safe space. Tanoch uh, mentioned that earlier, which is he, he creates a very safe space where you can participate, where you can risk where you feel comfortable to play, where you feel comfortable to experiment. And I think that's the first level of all that, is feeling like you're free enough to do something that sometimes feels counterintuitive uh, in moments of deep grief and, and heaviness, because it, it felt very heavy at times, uh, most days. Um, and then it's, the script has all the room, you know, for really great humor because I've always looked at humor as, you know, taking extremely serious situations and then turning them slightly, you know. Um, and Ryan leaves all the room, you know. I'm like, is, is it okay if I do this, you know? And, uh, you know, he always makes the final call on what makes it in and what doesn't. You know, there's a very... A uh, meaningful, meaningful scene with Danai in, this, in the film. Um, and it's not in the movie, but there are moments where M'Baku is like, eh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just stopped looking at him. I'm pretty glad he's not here. Yeah, yeah, she's, what I can't say about that moment without giving any kind of a spoiler, she starts saying how she is, the best warrior in Wakanda. There's no one else that Which could. Which is true. Sh hey, <laughs> sure. Warp sure. His butt. Yes. Small, small woman, please. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that scene is meant to be really. And and, and Baku's sitting there, just like, ah, I don't know, you know. Um, and it's it's that kind of thing where we feel safe enough to play an experiment in a scene sometimes that feels counterintuitive, but that's where a lot of humor lives. And um, it, it's just one of those really beautiful work environments where you can just be yourself and everyone knows that you're contributing for the betterment of the final process and of the whole picture. So it's just, that's that. If I could just jump in before you carry on uh, moving to Lupita. 
Lupita, I, I promised my son I would tell you, so I'm just going to say it. He says to tell you he loves you. He has a little, but a very real crush. Uh, so people, if you ever meet my 13-year-old, just let him know that I did what I said I would do. All right? Um, Lupita, it's been a few years since we've seen Nakia. That's a long time in the life of a warrior, you know. Um, and we don't know what to expect, you know, it's going into the movie. What are we going to get without giving away the story? from Nakia after such a long time? Uh, you know, it's hard to talk about Nakia in this film without giving it away. But um, what I'd say is that the last five years in Nakia's life have been eventful. She's lost the love of her life. So you can imagine that has had an effect on her. And in this film, there's, we experience different stages of grief. Uh, and the characters are dealing with the loss of T'Challa in different ways. Uh, and Nakia is definitely no exception. But we find her at a, a place where she's matured and her priorities have shifted and sharpened. But she is still the one you want to call in your hour of need. Um, shooting a movie and um yeah, it was like around November, I think. And yeah, I was just waiting to see like the ways in which Ryan, how he was feeling about moving forward because it was, as you can imagine, really sensitive. Um, I couldn't really see a way out. I was kind of like stuck because I was just like, I don't know how to do this without my brother. So it just felt... Like, I, I didn't have any clue what we would do. So then, you know, I had a, a beautiful, gentle discussion with Ryan. And, you know, I was really, I was just really impressed at, at his leadership and his, the balance, you know, that, that he, and just the courage that he portrayed and, 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 and how he expressed himself with just really clar clarity and just vision and just purpose. And I was kind of like taken back by that because we were all a little bit shaken still. But bro, you know, Ryan has a beautiful way of, you know, just containing it and still being a leader. You know, and we, we are all so grateful to him. So he explained it to me and I was, I was um, honored to be back and honored for the opportunity to, to represent and to honor my brother. I just want to ask you, how did you, how were you able to put together the, the production of the movie and how the reaction from the, from the previous one and this sequel, how, how, how can you judge it? I'm asking that question to Ryan. How do you judge the reaction to the sequel? Is that, is that your question, sir? Yes. How do we judge the reaction to the sequel? Oh, okay. Um, it's a great question. I think um, it's a fantastic question, bro. Because we're getting ready to put it all to the world, and it's, it's been um, it's actually actually I haven't spoken about this, but but I, you know we watched the film. Like, what was it last week or something like that in LA? Like like just a week ago, and um, and and I, I I felt an emotion that I hadn't felt before, um, because. Uh, I, I hadn't realized that the film had, had for so long kind of been our secret, you know, um, and, and, uh, and our way of like, it felt like, um, it felt like Chad was alive there with us for me while we were working on it, you know? So, so, so when, when the movie went off, I, 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 got, I got hit with this feeling of, um, I don't know how to describe emotions. I feel like words don't really, <laughs> don't really work for emotions sometimes, but it was like this feeling of like re re regret. I don't know if regret's the word, but, but, but it, 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 it was like, oh man, it's the world's now. It's not, our, it's not our secret thing anymore. And it was like, oh, my work with my bro is done in this chapter, you know what, I'm, you know what I mean? And, and, and not, I wasn't really ready for that feeling, you know? But, but it was a good feeling, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? It, like, um, but but it was it was a powerful one. I was unexpected. But 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 the, the truth is, is like, 
I, I think that that work like what we do is measured uh, uh, years and years after. Music is very important to the medium. Um, film is a combination of a lot of a lot of different mediums: fashion, um, performance, uh, 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 sonic ma manipulation. You know, I'm trying in the form of sound design, production design, painting, like all of these things. You know, uh, all of the art forms represented in. in, in and music is a is a massive uh, part of it, um, and music was a big part of of the first film. Uh, we we were able to line up a great collaboration with Kendrick Lamar. I was able to work with a good friend of mine, uh, Ludwig Jorgensen, who's our composer, and um, we we wanted to do something different on this on this uh, uh, particular project. We wanted to get you know more into the continent. Um, you know, uh, we, we wanted representation from the continent. It's something the night was always on me about. Um, you know, <laughs> but 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 just just getting art, artists that were artists that were from the continent and and and, and um, y'all haven't seen the film yet. Y'all y'all haven't seen it yet, right? Or have y'all seen it? Y'all haven't seen the film. Most yet. people here haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so y'all y'all all see it tonight though. Is that the vibe? Yes. yes. All right. Um, the film has a um. The film has a. a a, 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 a coming of age story in there, um, and and it made sense for us to have artists that were in different places in their careers, you know, like like artists that were that were that were that that, that, that have that have broken through, but also artists that are that are that are that are you know on the cusp of breaking through to a to a international audience, um, you know, uh, and, and and we wanted representation from um, uh, Mesoamerica as well. You know, so 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 the so the album is in conversation with all those with all those ideas and elements. Um, and you talk about Afrobeats. We Ludwig and I spent about a, about a week and a half here in Lagos um, some months back, where we recorded all that music. Um, and it was it was a time that I that I uh, that I think I'll look back on finally for like for the rest of my life. Those those few days here, just seeing like that Nigerian work ethic. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it was fantastic. We 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 barely slept. Um, and I, and I couldn't wait to get back. Uh, and we and, and artists came in from all over the continent, from South Africa. They would come in, and, and we got a couple of my piano tracks on there, you know. Um, and Ludwig grinded it out in Mexico City and in the Yucatan, um, over in North America. You know, um, I'm, I'm as proud of, of, of uh, I'm as proud of, of that album as I could be of any piece of music. And like I think like 90% of those songs are actually in the movie, you know, playing in in, in their entirety. Um, in, in Nigeria is well represented. As well as a lot of other countries on the continent, um, and I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. Today we look forward to seeing the movie and all your brilliant work. I've got to say, I love the honesty with which you all answered. You really are as amazing as the characters you play, and probably even more so. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please appreciate them all. Ryan Kugler, Tenoch Huerta Media.